with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So I got massaged by a man today, a very sensual, oily massage. After I got massaged the other day and I was booking the next one, I asked the bitch four fucking times. I'm like, can you do the massage for me? She's like, yes. I'm like, you. She's like, yeah. I'm like, I don't want the dudes. She's like, that's okay. I'll do it. I'm like, I just want to go over this one more time. You're going to do it, yeah? And she's like, are you fucking gay or something? What's wrong? I'm like, that's irrelevant. Don't worry about that. I prefer female elbows going into my ass cheeks. So I go in today. I get shown my fucking bed. I get changed and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I can hear this bitch speaking to another customer and then I hear, are you ready? I'm like, that better not have been for me. There is no one else in here, but that better fucking not have been for me. That better be some Chinese guy fucking dropping off some Uber Eats. And then I hear, are you ready? And I'm like, yes, I'm ready. And I look up and there's some shaved head, smiling Chinese man looking at me. He was quite handsome, to be honest with you. If you're going to have a gay Chinese massage, you would rather it be with a young stud than one of those old wise dudes with a big mole on his chin and hair coming out of it down to his knee. You've got to look for the positives in life. But when I looked up, I must have given him this look like, what the fuck are you doing here? Because he stopped and then he called over to the lady and the lady came over and she's like, he's going to be doing your massage. And I didn't want to go, listen, bitch, you fucking stretch out your forearms because you're doing my fucking back. We had a deal, but I'm too polite. That's what people say about me all the time. I'm too fucking polite. I didn't say anything. She goes, he'll do a good job. I said, I've still got this fucking injury. She said something to him in Chinese. And then I just went face down into the hole, the fucking bed hole. So this guy starts oiling me up and I'm like, fuck, this guy has the softest hands in the world. But that's all he used, just his gentle fucking hands. Hardly any elbow. When that lying bitch was massaging me, all she did was elbow. That's what fixed my fucking shoulder. Bit of elbow grease. This guy's giving me a fucking relaxing massage. I'm like, get in there. Come on, soft hands. Use a little bit of fucking elbow. Get those knots right out. But that's it. That's enough fucking male-on-male massages for me. They suck because you can't let your imagination run wild. Even if you're just going in for the massage and not the happy ending, you're still free to use a little bit of imagination. But when you're being massaged by a dude, you shut that shit right up. You go into full meditation. You block out any of those bad thoughts. But my neck and my shoulder are feeling pretty good again. I'm back to about 85%, full time at 85%. Except when I wake up in the mornings. I'm a little bit fucking stiff in the mornings. And me shoulders sore too. (laughs) That's a fucking classic tradie joke. Anyway, let's move on to week 40 of Hypothetical Mondays. I don't like Mondays. Tell me why you don't like Mondays. I just don't like Mondays because I'm going to shoot. Ooh, oot. The whole day down. And I think that's what I'm going to do with Hypothetical Mondays. 40 fucking weeks of hypotheticals with my heart half in it. At least the last 10 or 15 have been pretty half-hearted. But I kept pushing through and I've done 40 when I actually wanted to quit after four. And I was thinking maybe I'll push it out to 52 weeks. Make it a straight year. And then I thought, if I did that, it's possible I will blow my brains out on week 51. I just don't think I've got that many more hypotheticals left in me. There's only a certain amount of hypotheticals you get given when you're born. And once you've used them all up, you've used them all up, there's nothing you can do about it. But what I've been thinking is, I still need a Monday segment. It just gives me some fucking structure to the week. If I have something, I know I'm going to do on Mondays. So the new segment I'm going to start is going to be Ask Boyle. 
Now, you cunts are always messaging me, asking for fucking advice, asking questions, telling me dumb shit. So now, every Monday, I will answer some of the listeners' questions. Now, it can be on any fucking topic. You know what I'm like. There are very few things that I would not feel comfortable giving advice on. I don't think there's anything I wouldn't feel comfortable giving advice about. You're thinking about buying an investment property? Ask Boyle. You're unsure whether you want to go in for that open heart surgery? Ask Boyle. You and your partner have come to a stalemate on whether you should have the abortion or not? Ask Boyle. So that will be starting from next week. So someone please send in a fucking question. You know the drill. Send it into my social media. I'm Boyle Comedy on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. But let's get started with the final hypothetical. I might bring hypotheticals back every now and then if I get a good one. Because the people listening to like day 400 now don't know I have finished hypotheticals. So people keep sending them in. But if I get a good one, I'll do it. So anyway, the final hypothetical is... Who are the top three people you would have a drink with and break your sobriety? So the three people I would fucking break my sobriety for. That's a good one. I've been thinking about it a little bit. I thought I knew who it would be, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, nah, I'm not going that direction. So I'm just going to assume you mean alive people because dead people opens up too much of a can of worms. Do I do shots with the Buddha? Do I scull a beer with Jesus? You know what I mean. Do I go down to Hitler's bunker and share a stein with him? Just to see how cook the cunt actually was. So I'm not going to involve dead people. I'm talking the here and now. Who are three people I would have a drink with and break my sobriety? So I always wanted to drink with a comedian named Doug Stanhope. He's a legendary American comedian. He's like the Keith Richards of comedy. He's been a fucking booze hound for like 40 years and he's still fucking going hard. On top of that, he's one of the greatest comedians ever. And I had always pictured just getting fucking hammered with Stan Hope. But now that I'm sober, the more I think about it, the less likely I would be to do it. Because he's still drinking. He drinks every day. So it's not even a fucking event for him. It's just another Tuesday afternoon. Whereas for me, I'm breaking sobriety. I'm drinking with him. It's a fucking event for me. And I don't like the idea of the out of balance of enthusiasm there. So I'm going to say no to Doug Stanhope. And I'm going to choose another comedian. Another fucking legendary comedian. A New York fucking legend. Colin Quinn. You've probably never heard of him, but he is, amongst comedians anyway, a comedian's comedian, comedian, comedian. He's a legend. And he's been sober for like 35 fucking years. And he was a real Irish New Yorker booze fucking hound. So I like the idea of being in New York, sitting next to Colin Quinn, and he's just like, fuck it, Boyle. You feel like a beer? And I'd be like, I've never felt like anything more in my entire fucking life. Then we would just slam beers and get into a fist fight. That would be ideal. So that's one. Colin Quinn. The second one is a little bit more situational. Like this is a hypothetical. If for some reason I was in Moscow visiting the Kremlin on some podcasting business and I was there with Vladimir Putin and it's just me and Vlad sitting there having a chat in one of those big Russian chairs and we're just shooting the shit. He's telling me about assassinations. I'm telling him about my two podcasts and the sketch I did last week. And we're having a ball. And he calls over a crystal bottle of vodka and he pours one for himself and he pours one for me. I don't think in that situation I would be able to refuse the Vlad. For starters, I don't want him to think I'm a fucking pussy. But then also, I want to see how much Vlad can drink. Like, is he just going to have one drink and then shut up shop? Because I know if I start drinking, that bottle's fucking gone. If I start drinking with Vladimir Putin, I'm going to get disappeared that night. I'm going to drink a little too much and I'm going to get a little loose-lipped. So you think you're fucking tough, cunt? How old are you? 
I'll fucking wrestle you. I did fucking jujitsu for six weeks. I fucking rear naked choked my brother for fucking two hours, cunt. Fucking what do you got on that? I would also like to taste the vodka that fucking Vladimir Putin drinks as well. That's got to be some diamond encrusted fucking liquid gold, doesn't it? So Vladimir Putin's number two, that's situational. But also, yeah, I would probably just drink with Vladimir Putin. And the final one, which I never got to when I was thinking. The final one would be... I'm not too sure who the last one is. Who do you go? Do you go Michael Jordan? He likes a scotch. Do you share a stogie and a scotch with him? Or a Conor McGregor, get on the bags and have some proper 12? I don't know. All my heroes are dead. Well, one isn't. She's just hanging on. That's my nana. But my nana would never ask me to drink like that. Who's someone who's been sober for fucking ages? I feel like fucking someone else's sobriety up. Fucking what about Anthony Hopkins? Didn't he just do 50 years sober? Yeah, that would be sweet, actually. He's 50 years sober. He's probably like 84. Ah, fuck. Billy Connolly would have been a good one, too. But he might be a little too far down the road. I think he's been sober for like 30 fucking years too. I'll stick with Anthony Hopkins. And that is for no other reason than I want to be sitting there face to face with Anthony Hopkins. Looking into his eyes as he takes his first sip of alcohol in 50 years. I want to see the change in his eyes. I want to see them glaze over and just devil flames come up on them. So that's it. Colin Quinn, Vladimir Putin, and Anthony Hopkins. And that is the final hypothetical week 40. Thank you to everyone who sent in a hypothetical. They were fucking fun while they lasted, and some of them weren't that fun. But thank you for sending them in. Now, people, get geared up and start sending in some Ask Boils. All right, that's it for me tonight, and I'll see you the fuck later.